already started it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay, started streaming. Uh, now to get this working on SceneSat, which is always... Uh... Just reordering a tiny bit, so... Publishing, deactivate, activate, yes, and now, hopefully, it will show up on Facebook. Hooray. Razor, the kings of scene drama. Yeah, I love the demo so much. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah, right, cause I, I think I mentioned it um, for Vision, this was, as far as I remember, this was the first demo that I ever saw. Oh, that's cool. And so this was pretty much my, my introduction to the scene, and I was like, holy shit, this is really cool. How do I do that? So Rez and Bub Mood corrupted you. Yeah. That was, that's pretty they, much... Uh, they, they accidentally borrowed my vote disc in a, in a, in a sense. <laughs> that's exactly what they did. <laughs> Accidentally. Yeah. Okay, should be live on all the platforms. I'm checking Twitch now. Are you working Twitch? Yeah, Twitch. Yes, it is. Oh, oh that's a Probably posted from my channel as well. Cool. Thank you for the sub. Why well, you weren't already? Oh no, you're hosting. You're not subbing. Yeah. With one viewer, is that your bot or yourself? That's, that's <laughs> me watching it. <laughs> Every color. Important. How Dutch can you go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's every color, but it actually works. Unlike, I think, a lot of people that just throw colors at things. <laughs> they uh, have the black to compensate. Yeah, true. Uh, okay, what else am I missing? I should spam this on Facebook, probably. Oh yeah, the patterns one. Yeah, I I love this one. Yeah, this is cool. I, I think the problem I have with a lot of um, like old school demos is I I'm young enough that I don't know the hardware very well, um, so I, I'm not really familiar with kind of the, the technical capabilities and what I should be impressed by. Um, and so I find myself just kind of more drawn generally to the uh, like visually stylish ones rather than anything that's particularly technically impressive. Yeah. Um, and this one is just style everywhere. And and very it's technically both. impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely yeah. both. The write-up on this is awesome. Yeah, I love that. Did you read the write-up on this no. one? They have a write-up I read explaining... it. I could not tell you how it works, but I read it. <laughs> No, I, I'm in a similar boat. Like, I had to retroactively learn a lot of the capabilities of the hardware. Yeah. And and for me, it was because when I got into the demo scene, it was... I got into the Blitz Basic demo scene, which was a bunch of guys in, like, 2003 doing 
stuff that they saw in Amiga 10 years before. <laughs> Whenever you mention that, I so, always have have this yearn to make fun of you. But then you ended up doing demos like you do, so, so I have to shut my mouth. This is so hard for me. I just wanted to let you know. Please proceed. <laughs> you still can. <laughs> I just want to see people doing um, things like Kefren's bars in uh, in Scratch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we can make fun of them for using Scratch. Yeah. Yeah, that's always fun. But, I mean, if you do a cool demo in Scratch, that's a plus point, because you're going beyond the limitations of the platform. Uh, so that's like actually the VLC cool. demo from Tursak? Oh god, the VLC, yeah. That, that, one... that one was interesting. I still don't know how they do it. I guess VLC has some way to show pages or script of some sort. It no, was... So what he what he did is he had the video was just a gradient, so or like from black to white, so it compresses super tiny. But it also represents time. And because VLC also has the capability of, of having shader filters, that's how the effects were done. Taking that original video color as input and then the text is the subtitle features <laughs> very nice and it ends up being released and then the audio is just mp3 with some super low bit rate <laughs> it's pretty cool impressive yeah logical I, achievement I, I ran it myself the frame rate was not great <laughs> i don't know why that is but <laughs> i don't think the shaders are particularly fast uh Need to be optimized. Hey, Mentatronic. Hey, Evil. Welcome to the stream. Yeah. But yeah, like, I, I understood most of how this demo works, aside from how they did this 3D stuff. Like, there's that, that's beyond me. Um, but, like, the tithing patterns, that was a really, really clever trick. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say uh, after that Blitz Basic stuff. So I kind of had an appreciation of, of at least how a lot of those effects normally would work. Mm -hmm. And then I remember seeing a couple C64 demos that did those same effects. And then I started, okay, I'll, I'll try. I like Assembler. I'll try learning some 6502. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I did that, I realized this is impossible. Like that computer <laughs> is way too slow. None of this makes any sense. And it was this huge rabbit hole that, yeah. that didn't end up leading to me actually releasing a demo on the platform until last year like 10 years later didn't you do but, but you did game boy stuff before that does yeah count? so so uh, yeah along the way had released the game boy stuff and the super nintendo stuff both of which were all those all those demos were made entirely differently like on c and converting c to assembler no they they all they all had some assembler components um but i think the snes ones were kind of the most crazy in terms of tech where it was they're actually done in F-sharp, and I have this whole thing where uh, I have this data structure that represents the video state of, of the SNES, hmm. and I can generate one of those structures for every frame the demo is going to run, and then I can diff those structures to see what actually changes per frame, and I can use that to produce bytecode that will run on the SNES that will actually make those changes in the hardware. Okay. So it's kind of like this big pre-calc setup. Wow, ah, okay, I see. That's actually uh, a pretty cool way of doing that. I like that. Yeah, so it's so my demo is a function that takes in time and outputs the structure, and then everything else kind of happens automatically. So I'm able to use like Rocket stuff for sync and 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 full asset management. And there's so much unused potential in that. And the reason why it's it's a decent idea is because that's a system where your CPU is really really crap, um, yeah. and so we're basically relying on the hardware DMA just to stream from ROM with those changes. And then you have a lot of ROM, so it, it's okay that you use a lot. And then the audio is completely different. The audio is just a normal tracker setup, but it runs on a separate hardware unit. Okay. Um, I need to retweet and stuff. Missed that. Spam. <coughs> Excuse me. No, I, I'm, I'm really... I, I did a talk, actually, on some of that in... at. NVC in 2015, so if, you, if you're a little mm -hmm. more curious, you can look that up. Um, I don't know if I explained it that well, um, but if you understood what I just said, then, yeah. then you'll get it. <laughs> but I really want that. I, I have a lot of ideas that are that would be really hard to do without a system like that that I, that I want to do for the next one. But 
it'll be it'll be a while before I actually make it, that. Yeah, that, that's. I mean, if you have a a system that's completely different from the rest, that's what you should really use it for. It's to do stuff that it wouldn't be very easily achieved the standard way of coding things. I think so too. And 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 the reason I came up with that too was that like doing the effects, like writing the assembler code to do some of those effects is, is fun, but then doing all the code to like load and unload memory between effects. And like you like if you want a good pace, like with the Smash It demo, mm -hmm. um, everything just hard cuts and you don't have enough time to load the new data into memory right as the effect starts. So you have to do that beneath the other effect. And even our, our CC4 demo does that too. So, so it's two threads essentially one that's running in the interrupt that's updating the effect and then one that's running in the cpu and the idle time that's, that's doing all the data preparation for the next one and that linking process is really annoying because you have to make sure all your data doesn't overlap and you have to make sure your effects don't actually use use all the memory in the in the system like and, and i wanted to work around days. that and so i came up yeah exactly so I, <laughs> so i wanted to work around that and that's why i came up with that system to be able to manage memory and it turns out you can make whole demos with it all right hey corby Saur, welcome to the to the stream thank you for the follow uh, we're still running the pre-show ferris you picked this demo can you tell us why you picked this demo why do you like it so much it's one of my all-time favorites um i fell in love with this demo when it was new and let me move, move a little here back um, then traction we're doing stuff with a lot of math in it yeah a lot of math a lot of cpu code um i don't know it's just it's the whole vibe of the whole thing i just think it's ridiculously pretty um, I love this kind of color scheme. I love this music. I love glow. <laughs> I just, I just really liked it then, and I still like it now. I tried to do a version of this in like software back in the day, but I didn't get very far. This is all GPU accelerated, and it was actually way too heavy for my machine at the time, <laughs> which is why I tried to do the same kind of stuff in software. Not I was well, thinking I this was CPU, not GPU. No, it's it's definitely GPU. Really? Uh, yeah. It's if, especially like if you look at the smoothness of the bloom. Okay. Um, I mean, most of the effects themselves are all done on CPU. It's placing cubes and then the end map, like or the GPU is just drawing cubes with end maps and doing bloom. This is another right. demo I queued up. Yeah, from Kulers. Asterozoa. Uh, I think this is 64K, actually, isn't it? Oh, yes. And one of my favorite soundtracks in the 64K ever, in the demo ever. I just love this vibe, too. Kind of, I feel nostalgic watching these demos, actually. I haven't seen... Uh, <laughs> After falling in love with them like 10 years ago. 10 plus to this point. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't really do much for me, but that's, you know, everyone has different tastes, I guess. I think it looks dated at this point, but I still, something about it. Yeah. The, the, I think one of the things that's harder, hardest to kind of get over with even demos that are a few years old is not HDR. Mm. Um, at least for me, it really ruins the the immersion for me now, but it didn't used to. So. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's why um, sort of more stylized things kind of hold up a bit better. Yeah, I think so too. And you start expecting ambient occlusion and stuff like that on the rendering. Ambient occlusion? Who has that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll get to a point in the future where everything's real sun path traced. And then we'll look back at the demos that we're making today and think, what, what were we doing? <laughs> Where's all the shading? Well, there is this tendency nowadays that we rely so much on pixel shader, we don't really do stuff on the CPU. I mean, if you have a full engine, you can do both CPU and GPU, but people who do like intros nowadays, they only use pixel shaders on their stuff. They don't really use the CPU to do anything anymore. Uh, I guess one of the main reasons is because it's you can compress the shader 
better. So if you use both methods, you would end up with a little uh, overhead that you're trying to minimize, but also the ray tracing capabilities are so, so powerful. And I mean, that's what you really want to explore is to take full advantage of the GPU or the graphics card itself. Yeah, it's, it's also a matter of speed. It's just better to, to move stuff around on the GPU. Yeah. So the, the last demo we did, I guess we'll watch that later probably. That that was all polygons. And it was... The, the CPU is just used for dispatching GPU calls. So everything's done in either compute shaders or, or regular drawing. But the CPU code for that stuff is also a bytecode, which I think packs better than the equivalent x86, but I haven't actually tested that. The shaders do tend to compress really well. I don't know if they compress better than a lot of self-similar x86, but you're, you're absolutely right that, that mixing the two approaches is, will definitely pack worse. Yeah. You know, because they're completely different kinds of statistics. Yeah, and I, both of my demos thus far have just been pretty much entirely shaders and very, very little CPU code to hold it all together. I think, I think there's also something to be said about like the ease of getting started with that because it's it's pretty easy to start playing around with or, or i wouldn't say easy but natural to start just playing around shader toy and then just kind of putting that in an executable wrapper and, and yeah, going for with people that. who are now getting into graphics yeah but if you started like in the 90s it feels a bit counterintuitive unless you know the yeah. whole pipeline of how the graphics or the new graphics uh, is supposed to be rendered then it makes sense that you have both sides of, of, of the playing field. Yeah, but if you're a new person, just messing with a pixel shader, it's, it's, it's easier, more accessible. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, my, my first demo, which is going to be on the playlist at some point, um, was basically just a, a shader toy showcase. It was prototype all of the effects in shader toy, copy them down onto a file, load that into the executable yeah, pretty much and then you don't have to do a demo tool so it's, yeah. it's a great trade-off i mean it, it wasn't great i like guess you know hard-coded time offsets and like manual beat sync and it was a little that's bit that's how the first demo supposed to be yeah <laughs> i like that i think the latest root kids demo the one from tersoc uh, they actually used the hacked bonzomatic to be their to be their demo tool I don't know if that was just to have like a live shader reload tool locally and that was the easiest path to get that working. I don't know why they did that, but that's what they were telling me at least. This is another demo that I have a soft spot for from 10 years ago. And I'm still waiting on Ronnie to make a soundtrack like this in Earth Synth. <laughs> I just love this, throw a bunch of polygons around and make something that kind of looks like architecture kind of style. Pixar does this a ton. Yeah, he has a heavy architecture background, so I guess that's, that's yeah. probably where it comes from. I, I really that's like that. Uh, I call it minimal complexity because it's like minimal yeah. elements, but uh, with small rotation, stuff like that, to make it look very complex. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the composition of simple elements that makes something like the whole is greater than the sum of its parts kind of thing. I really yeah. like that. Yeah, and it compresses it really well as well. It yeah, it does. Yeah, I really liked um, the one that uh, Provod did recently as well. Um, so it was kind of real-time past trace architectural stuff. Yeah, that was cool. I think we are, we are 10 minutes early, but I think we can start already the show. So we already have a, a decent amount of people on the chat room, so uh, I think we should, yeah. should be ready to go. Unless, of course, you we everyone wants to watch Demon Blood by Youth Uprising. Oh, we do. We do. <laughs> 
because we can still play that one. <laughs> I'm happy with the effects, I'll, I'll admit that, but, you know. Does it just feel outdated? It's the pacing of it for me. Like, we really threw that together in a hurry at the end. Like, all the all the mural streaming stuff actually has to stream tile data as it goes, and, like, that ended up being a lot more complicated than I expected. And I built a whole assembler for the demo, too, which was really stupid. So it ended up just being a total deadline crunch. Sorry, you built an assembly? Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. And then, and then I made it support multiple architectures, and that's how the SNES stuff started, but that's another thing. <laughs> When in doubt, build your own assembler, guys. Yeah, it's stupid. It's fun though. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip to that demo. I was busy that year. Yeah. Now it's nostalgic to see though, and I am happy with some of the effects, like the, at least at the time, the the twisting scroller was a new thing that I hadn't seen on this platform before. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I, about I, it in terms of innovation. I, I think just at some point a few years back, um, I was essentially down a Google hole of looking into the demo scene. Um, and I just Googled for Game Boy Demo. This was the first thing that came up. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. And then like literal years later, I realized, oh, it was Ferris that made that. What? <laughs> that's <How>? so funny. <laughs> it's like a weird connection of like two completely unrelated things. Yeah, yeah. Now, and it was a friend of mine from high school that drew all the graphics too. It's just kind of a thing that like... Monsters. Yeah. 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 If you look at this in the debugger, it, none of it looks like at all how you'd expect. <laughs> yeah, I have looked at it in the debugger. A lot of pre-calc stuff. Yeah, I think it actually like broke the debugger I was working with. <laughs> I, Did it? I would look at a frame and like half the tiles for that frame just wouldn't be in the tile map. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, for the for the murals. That makes yeah. sense. Because it there's the way the video memory is is organized, uh, you don't have enough to store an entire picture, or even like you, you get a little more than half a picture in each video bank. Okay. So it switches the video bank mid frame, uh, so you're gonna see half the image missing depending on. Oh, the right, okay. frames that the so it's almost like streaming is. instead of actually showing stuff. Yeah, it, it 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 does stream. It scrolls two image halves, and then they they overlap in the middle because that's where it switches, and then oh. so it, it's half an image plus a tile that it has and then it streams the next tile for each of those halves and that's the, or the next row of tiles and that's how it works or the next column depending on if it's a horizontal or vertical so vertical okay well there we go the debugger wasn't broken <laughs> yeah I, the the if it was bgb i actually had to send them some bug reports when making the demo though because I, <laughs> I accidentally used the wrong interrupt that triggers per line on some of the effects and so they would get they would be a scan line off from what they should have displayed and the graphics ended up completely jumbled for that but it was they were they were able to fix that really quickly and, and the the dude who makes bgb at beware i think is his handle he was he was just thrilled because he just wants to find more bugs <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure it was bgb i've seen um, that's yeah. usually shout outs to to beware and nitro 2k01 who fixed that within like days and I chose to kill on one is a senior as well, isn't he? I've seen his nickname yeah. around. Definitely. Never never met met that person, but was very helpful online. And this was an invitation for Evoke, I believe. Which Ferris thinks this is music by Gargai, and I have doubts if it's from Gargai or not. It's definitely from Kakai. Did you check the credits on DemoZoo? I didn't. I'll do that now, though. There's just, there's no way. It sounds so much like him. Poet claims it's him. It, it's him. Okay. I concede then. This is, this is one of the tracks that made me get into synth programming. Yeah, DemoZoo agrees that it's him. So. <laughs> Bye. I think a lot of demos it was just copy pasted from Poet anyway. In terms of credits, actually, it's mostly the other way around because they had oh. credits on demos first and only later was added to Poet. So you, you, you can usually find more reliable credits on demos. Okay. And when I say reliable, I mean existing 
and on Puet sometimes they're just not there. Yeah. I don't know, they tend to be pretty solid from what I've seen, but again, I'm usually only looking at the more recent stuff. Okay, so the plan for today is uh, we talk a little bit with YX and, uh, on uh, how uh, got into the demo scene. Uh, then we are going to show some demos from the recent demo parties. Uh, stuff from uh, Demo Splash, stuff from Tursak, from Chaos Constructions, and from... I'm forgetting one. What am I forgetting? I'm forgetting one. I know I'm forgetting one. What is the other one that I'm missing? Deadline. We can show some stuff from Deadline. I think we already showed a few from Deadline, but they're like four of them worth checking out, so I guess we can do it. So welcome everyone to Mystery Demo Scene Theater 9000. Thank you all for joining. Uh, YX, tell us, how did you get into the demo scene? Um, it's been a long one. <laughs> it, it was back in 2011. I ended up just browsing YouTube randomly and ran into a, a Razer 1911 demo. Uh, and that was, as far as I remember, that was the first demo I saw. I don't know if it actually was. Um, and then just kind of from there, it was just sort of, always just occasionally like googling and running into um, demo videos and then like 2013-ish i think um i ran into shader toy and i started seeing ray marching on there and i kind of started poking around with it and learning my way around how the, all of that kind of fit together mm -hmm. um and then basically in january of this year um subby who does the, who's done the music for both of my demos um, wandered over to my desk at work and said, hey, revisions in a few months, do you want to go? Um, <laughs> like, Because he knew that I was already interested in the demo scene. And he was like, hey, look, it's the biggest demo party. It's in like three months, do you want to go? And I was like, you know what? Why, Why not? not? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a new experience, it'll probably be fun. Um, I like it though. Yeah. Um, and then about five seconds after, the, after saying yes to that, um, my brain immediately like fast tracked to Right, it's revision. You have to submit something. Yeah. To build something, anything. Um, That's the problem with going to a demo party. You just say yes and then, oh shit, now I have to make a production. Yeah. <laughs> um, Every time. That, that's what we're watching now is the, the result of that, which is essentially it's just a shader toy showcase, but it's, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool for, for first demo. First, yeah, for first demo, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah I think it's really what? really good yeah thanks yeah watching it back i can certainly see like the the scenes that i've rushed and the scenes that were like mad panic 4 a.m on the day of the <laughs> um like the this scene right now is just a repeat of an earlier scene just with some polar mapping wraps on it um which i'm not too happy with but yeah whatever it is no good. shame in that it's yeah. called recycling <laughs> everyone should do it yeah. especially at 4 a.m when you're reaching the deadline <laughs> yeah Watch, watching a lot of other demos, I, I think I should just, I could have just kind of stretched the effects that I had and had them last longer, because um, I feel like this kind of cut between a lot of effects quite quickly. Uh, you might have ruined the pacing a little bit with that, though. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Everybody loved this one, though, the, the barcode. Yeah, scene. that was really cool. Yeah. There's a tiny, tiny little bug in it, though, um, on the little like character silhouette. <laughs> I got the wrap mode wrong, so there's like a tiny little pixel artifact at the top of the head where it's like wrapping oh, the feet what? around. <laughs> yeah, whatever. No, it looks great. I was I was very impressed by this. And uh, did you also compete on the shader showdown at Revision or was it only oh, at it Nova? Yeah. Also that the was Nova with the cool maze thing. Yeah. That I remember. The, the shot with the Taurus there, I actually had some horrible hacks for the uh, for like the, the cutscene bars at the top and bottom of the demo. I had a horrible hack in there just so I could get the laser beam to like break through them. And like one person picked up on it. <laughs> but I don't know, it's a tiny detail. Was it coupe? I, say again? Was it coupe? Uh, no, it was um, Piss on Ice. Oh, yeah. Um, just in the, in the Poet thread, like halfway down, he's like, hey, by the way, watch that laser beam. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, and again, like mad frantic panic at 4 a.m. the day of the deadline. 
So wh what about for this one, for Nova? Did you have proper time to do things or was this also last minute? Oh, oh, mad, mad panic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, kind of the idea for this one started pretty much as revision ended, like on the bus back to the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was thing, it, it was kind of a mindset of what resources are there on the OS that I can abuse, that I can just kind of steal. Um, because I know that they'll always be there on the system and I can just take those for um, keeping it low in size. And it occurred to me, hey, there's this emoji font on every Mac. Let's just do something with that. Um, so I did. I kind of dove down trying to pull out the actual like bitmaps. And then after that kind of turned into a dead end because it's the font format is really complex. Um, I eventually just said, right, we'll, we'll fuck it, we'll text mode it. Um, and yeah, again, it, it pretty much became a mad panic in the last two weeks. But it's cool because so we, we're used to a lot of we are used to a lot of uh, different text mode demos, but we never seen a text mode demo with emoji stuff. So it's it's a cool that it's like a new take or a fresh take into because emojis just gotten popular like on the last one, two, three years. So yeah. it's, it's it's cool that it's finally being used in the demo, and I'm 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 hoping more people will end up doing text mode demos with emojis. I think it will be yeah more interesting. Yeah, I think this is really good use of it too. Like it's it doesn't maybe maybe it does, but I don't actually feel like it feels gimmicky. I think it just feels clever because it's yeah. used well. I don't know. It, it feels a little bit gimmicky, but it yeah. Um, and and like on the tech side for this, it's literally just a single shader outputting to a tiny little frame buffer. Um, right. Just outputting grayscale to the frame buffer, and then on the C plus plus side, it's just reading each pixel and saying right. Here's a table of emojis. Which one does this like pixel <laughs> map like to? Like a table per effect? Uh, no, it's just a global table. Ah, uh, okay, nice. Um, yeah, makes it easier, I guess. Yeah, if you look on Proet, I think there's a link to the GitHub project for it. Cool. Uh, tell me something about developing on the Mac, because doing intros on Mac, I think the people from Windows have a bit of a head start. So uh, why Mac, and what do you think about the whole difference between platforms? The, the reason I went with Mac was basically I knew I would be doing it and I, I knew I'd be finishing things in a mad panic at the party anyway. Um, and the only laptop I've got is a Mac. So that was pretty much the entire reasoning for that. It's like, right. You can always install dual boot on a Mac. Yeah, but that involves effort and like backing everything up. <laughs> that would be yeah, cheap. Effort is hard. Um, yeah, so that, like that was the entire reasoning behind that was just I know I'm going to need to finish in a mad panic, and it's going to be on a Mac. So, um, and yeah, like we we, we don't have things like um, Crinkler or um, Crunchy or anything. Um, the the compression that I run is really really horrible. It's I, I take the executable, I gzip it, and then I put a tiny bit of shell code at the top of the file that says take the rest of this file, unzip it, and run it. We call that <laughs> dropping. Yeah, it's yeah. horrible. It works. It's if it works, yeah, I think um, it's great. We're gonna switch to demos from uh, Deadline. I think we already oh, seen yeah. these demos before on the show, but we're gonna play them anyway, and we can talk about other stuff, not necessarily about the demo. Um, sure. I actually so, hadn't watched this one yet. Okay, so you can you get to watch the winner old school demo from uh, Deadline. Yeah, made by Lemon. They are back. Uh, they, they actually, I, one of the things that I like from Lemon is that they came back, but they released like their whole tool chain of how to do demos for Amiga using, uh, I think it was Visual Studio and the emulator that, that they were using. Cool. Nice. I'm liking this refraction. Like it's, it's obviously a really simple cheat, but I'm loving that. Feels very think, old school. Uh, yeah. I think Pantaloon also has a similar Visual Studio space setup for C64 stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he ever released that though. The secret sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't Lemon have something at Revision as well? Uh, yeah, Lemon. they did. They've been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, YX, tell me something. Uh, why didn't you do WebGL stuff? If you mostly do shader, why not do WebGL? Why do native Mac? Oh, because I hate JavaScript. Okay, that's fair enough. 
pretty simple. Reason. But I mean, if it's all WebGL, it's mostly a, a, a pixel shader anyways. You just need a wrapper yeah. around it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a C++ And creator, you, you but... would get some extra bytes out of it because you can also have that PNG uh, dropper also automatically. You get PNG compression for free out, no, of, that's true. out of WebGL. Not all People of do their own packers. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Great graphics. I, I'm missing proper 2D graphics on demos. They need, everyone just focuses on 3D stuff. Yeah, I don't know. 3D is generally more impressive from a technical standpoint, at least on the old school. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, on the old demos, where you we always had like 2D graphics, like in your face, like it will be one effect of the demo would just be to show an image there, and we don't have that anymore on demos. Sure, we do. Go watch the uh, go watch the um, the Alice demo from uh, Deadliners and Lemon from Revision that had multiple places where it was just 2D image. Which demo? The uh, the fall, I think it was called. I think Alice, I think that's what it's called. It's the was it the winner of the Amiga demo compo at revision this year? I yeah, think. but there you go for old school platforms, not for new. Mm. Like on PC, you don't have that. Oh, I okay. The, I see what you mean. The last time I remember seeing that and thinking it was really cool was you should buy How Job. Yeah, because they they had multiple two D image scenes where like I think a couple of them were static images, but one of them was like this big layered thing that kind of uncovered itself as it went along. That was really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so this that we're watching now, I believe, well, it's from Deadline, and it's a four K, I believe. Yeah, I'm gonna search what position it got. I think it's uh, actually the first entry that this person did. So nice work in that regard. Yeah, it's nice for a first day. It really reminds me of, I think there was a similar intro released either this year or last year at Soul School Win. I think it was this year. Very similar kind of content. Yeah, like it's, it's certainly got some rough edges, some um, kind of place Literally. for everything, but <laughs> yeah. When I was watching it on the stream originally, I kept imagining that this was like, you know, Dune and that it was should be like a worm, a giant worm coming out of the dunes and stuff. But because, I mean, a worm is relatively easy to ray trace. So it, it would have sort of fit. That was it by head. So um, I don't know. Those were my, my two cents. <laughs> I think it's a, a really nice first demo for sure. Yeah. I got third place on the combined intro combo. It's the Dune, Dunes Day Machine by Nilki. And there's the machine. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how that makes dunes, but apparently it does. Yeah, the encoder is not liking the, uh, the noise that they've got on there. Yeah. Encoder? I hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Transient by LJ and Virgil. Uh, this oh, I really yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. This one's pretty cool. Uh, this one got first place on uh, the combined intro compo. Yeah, I think this is really nice. I think... I'll, I'll save my thoughts to the end of it, but I really like this. <laughs> Actually, screw it. I'll just talk over this. But I think, <laughs> I think this is this is as best of this kind of demo you're, you're will ever see in 4K. Like, not to be super blanket statement, general general, general, general. Gotta remember how to talk. But my point is like, it's gonna be really hard to pull off something this stylish and 2D without it not looking like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a 4K. And I think the amount of sync and, and that kind of stuff that's here is 
about as much as you can get with that with that category. I think something that's this kind of style in 64k. Um, obviously, you have a lot more more room there, and I think this parts of this could benefit from that. But I think as a 4k in this style, I think this is. I, I see some minimalistic stuff from uh, Ink as well that was a bit like this. Well, they had some 3D effects as well. Yeah. I'm thinking, I think it was called Minimal by Ink yeah. or Pooh Brain Ink. It was pretty cool as well. That's from I especially like the music on this one. It's really, really sounded good. I mean, it, Virgil. It's always the yeah. same thing. Like, Virgil does a track and like, how the hell does he fit all these high quality instruments on this thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of it's not often that we see um two D stuff in the like on the PC platform. Um, and this is just really, really stylish and, and pretty. If if I had to say anything negative about it, it would be two things. I think the vignette is too strong, and I think that Overall, it looks a little LDR to me. LDR? Um, what do you mean LDR? Like low dynamic range. It, ah. There's something about the, the fall-offs in the in the mm. colors that irks me a little. But I think I think overall, it's still really really good. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on the uh, on the vignette. But I'm not so sure about the other one. This demo, I have a big soft spot for. So it turned out pretty good. I mean, it reminded me a lot of uh, the Satori demo that. Uh that was made recently with the uh, yeah with soundtrack by well the satori and asd demo but uh, yeah. from demo bit last year something like that but this it's, one it's went also... different flow but same kind of visuals but different and this one really works well together yeah and ronnie's soundtrack here is it sells it really well more yeah. than more than it should in a way <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think I, this also reminds me a lot of there's a SQNY demo that did very similar rendering like 10 years ago. Uh, what the I think? Yes, exactly. Let me see if I can find the name. I remember it very well. Yeah, it was really nice. But I don't remember the name of it. Me neither. Yeah. Uh, Chromosphere. Chromosphere. Chromosphere, yeah, exactly. And very, very similar. Um, similar rendering and colors. Yeah, like line outlines kind of thing. And yeah, doing, it's, it's uh, that put, put a bunch of gradients under a Sobel. Yeah. Uh, and it, I really like that saw. I think it looks really, really good. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm still trying to figure out how they rendered this. Um, but I think you just answered that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's another, uh, it's the Chaos Constructions 2011 invite, I think, by um, White, White, probably. Yeah. Yeah, that also has a very similar style but i don't think the rendering is done the same way it's just similar colors and a lot of lines another demo i quite like 2011 i think yeah i really like the um kind of sort of soft chromatic effect they've got going yeah and the uh what was it firefly i think it was by alcatraz it did a similar kind of thing and i really like that one as well I really like this greetings part, and it's just one of those things that's simple, and the way it moves just fits really well with the music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like the cheesy part, and also the man is walking cheesy, so I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the. I hate the part musically, but it it works in the demo. <laughs> yeah, it fits. Absolutely fits. And the, the last scene of this demo is stunning. Um, I don't know if I can say that about the rest of it, but I really like it. And I like just how the different parts fit together. They, I mean, they're all rendered the same, so it, obviously they fit in a way, but I don't know. The whole thing just has this continuity that I really like. Yeah, that was the high point for me as well of the demo. It's, I'm gonna say it's no hold on. Yeah. But it's really nice. And I love this. Yeah. Alarm!
has this craft craftwork vibe to it as well. Definitely. The X's in the eyeballs or in the eye sockets is a nice touch. Sit down calmly. Take a stress pill and think things over. Our mom said how many bites is this? I'm gonna say yes. at least seven. No, this <laughs> this is a full demo, so <laughs> yeah. Not uh, limited. Uh, now we're watching stuff from Chaos Constructions because I, I neglected it a little bit uh, on a few shows and there are four or five worth checking out demos. Most of them are for Spectrum or for yeah, the BK0010. But uh, I think it's worth checking out. Definitely. I usually like a lot of these demos. This one I haven't seen yet, but uh, yeah, definitely so, Spectrum. So does your assembler do stuff for Spectrum as well, Ferris? Uh... I mean, it does Z80 for Game Boy. Well, similar to Z80, that Nintendo added some instructions for that, but... So I think it could, <laughs> with a different linker. But I'm not yeah. really using that anymore. I, I've been... I, I've kind of expressed interest in doing something for an old-school platform at some point, um, and I was immediately told, you should do something on the ZX, because then you can do... You can play up the whole YX does ZX thing. Yeah! That does, so, yeah. maybe... Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a great idea, but I personally would recommend C64. Uh, just in terms of the resources that are out there and... Yeah. I mean, in terms, in terms uh, of... I, of I, I mean, YX is game. British, so... He can talk with Gasman, he can talk with... Uh, with uh, with uh, the guys from 8-Bit, so... Should have enough uh, direct resources the people who know the platform well to be able to pull it off. Well, I, I, I'm being told Amiga. <laughs> and if your musician demands, uh, I guess I guess you have to. <laughs> if, if it's Hoffman telling you that, don't listen to no, it. No, it's Subi. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. No, I'm kidding anyway. Amiga sounds great. I actually really want to do Amiga myself. Um, yeah. Especially because Blueberry was talking to me uh, he keeps having this idea of having an Amiga compo where you're only allowed to have CPU code that, that fires off the, the blitter. And then the blitter can write copper lists and the copper can invoke the blitter again. So he wants to do an entire uh, copper blitter demo. But that's just stupid. <laughs> but I really want to try it. It's not stupid. It's different. It's experimental. Yeah, I think I'd actually think that would be really fun. Okay, well, everybody in chat is just suggesting different platforms for me to work on now. <laughs> yeah, do all of them. Yeah. Yeah, Molov wants me to do something on Super Nintendo. So. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. I, I want guess. him to do something on Super Nintendo. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, Ferris has the framework ready, so you can just talk to him. He gives you a framework. You're ready to go. Yeah, Chio. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Again, in terms of hardware that I have access to right now, it's pretty much just going to be Game Boy. So, I don't know. That's, that, honestly, though, that's a really good one. Yeah. Because um, it's it it has all those elements of, like, the early 80s to mid-80s computers, so you're still doing a lot of, like, per-scan line effects and, and that same kind of 8-bit feel. Yeah. But it is a little more modern, so, like, you do have uh, horizontal blank interrupts and full screen scrolling and some things that really help making those yeah. effects. Like you don't you don't have to trick the hardware into redisplaying a line and like do a stretcher like you would on C sixty four just to be able to select lines to display or like yeah. a plasma or whatever. You you get that in the hardware and you can just build simple tables to do that. So, and plus it's 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 a nice testing system because you just have it with you and it's easy to get code on it and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I I think that's a great one to start with. Yeah, well, I think that I don't like the trackers on it as much, but that's not really your problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get to subject Subby to uh, having to use LSDJ or whatever the other trackers are. I don't think you'll get away with LSDJ because that's a CPU monster. Oh, yeah. But a uh, Kirillin editor. That's probably the easiest. Oh, <laughs> uh, The Kirillin, like Kirillin Siberian, I'll find it. <laughs> well, you I need to get the flashcard for the Game Boy, though. Are those easy to get nowadays? They're really easy to get. Yeah. I've... I would recommend Dragon Dirt, but that's the more expensive. But then there's the GB USB or whatever it's called. That's good enough. Yeah, the... Um... Is this... 
Yeah, the, this thing, the EMS cart. Okay, you already have one then. I've, I've already got two of them, yeah. <laughs> I just uh, I just dropped a link to the Kirillin editor thing on the oh. Twitch chat, so. Find the form that is bookmarked for later. There's there's some some effects like in in the C64 demo we did last year we had the zooming plasma and I hadn't seen that done on this on the platform before, but that effect would work really well on Game Boy. Yeah, I don't think how you do that. Now. <laughs> it's probably more fun to figure it out yourself, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to. Yeah. At least tell you how we how we did it, and how I think it could be improved. Taking Game Boy to the next level. Yeah, something I wanted to do um, sometime at a Shader Showdown is like try and emulate some old school effects, like a Game Boy effect, at like the right resolution with the right aspect ratio in the middle of the screen, in the Shader. 24 time limit. So the yeah the uh, Suskogen last year Blueberry did that. Yeah, and creamed me. Well, yeah, and it, it was, was also a foreshadowing kind of thing for the text writer, and that was a uh, it was an interesting approach. I tried to make the shader compo in the shader compo, hmm. but I hadn't practiced it, and I think I choked. But hmm. blueberries was really good, and yeah, <laughs> a good yeah, example of doing you that. Did, you did a stream as like a post mortem of uh, revision in that one, I think. Yeah, I did, didn't I? I forgot about that. So this thing that we're watching now is a telephone that is powered by a BK0010, as far as I know. And you can make a demo for the display on it. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wild combo, I'm guessing. So earlier I said that that 4K was like the best you're going to see in that kind of genre. I think that applies here too. Yeah. I mean, you have a, limit a certain limitation on what you can do with it, I mean. <laughs> yeah, this this could be so much worse. Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. could just be a mod tune with, a, a like, a scroller that doesn't even do a sine wave. Yeah. I think this is great. Oh, you have Knight Rider. <laughs> That's it's the Matrix, I guess. Certainly inventive in choice of platform. I will give them that. <laughs> Definitely. And you were saying that it was a wild demo, and it actually was part of the old school demo competition because it was powered by the BK0010. Oh, okay, right. So uh, I, I think it got actually controversial, but you know, it's Russian scene, so every single demo that they pull out is going to be controversial in some way or another. Yeah. Now, Neo and I is talking about uh, a more a more close to our hearts uh, demo scene platform, which is the pharmacy signs in Portugal. We have this uh, cross-shaped things, and they use do a lot of special effects there, like plasma That's effects, nice. zoom in, sliders, all sorts of things. Okay, good on meditation ever. And next up, we go... Actually, oh, it's Trout's favorite. Yeah, it's it's uh, the BK0011, which is uh, the other version, and it's a version of Bad Apple, of the BK0011. I like these. I love the addition of the headphones. Yeah, that was cute. <laughs> because they're Apple. Although Apple, supposedly, it, uh, they have wireless earplugs now, so... Yeah. yeah, but they also don't do that style of advert anymore. So, mm. so I got—I I mentioned earlier with the the SNES stuff, and I got a lot of flack for that being so pre-calc. People are calling it FMB and stuff. <laughs> uh, so I would really like to do one of these on SNES. Just I mean, to lean into that. It is pre-calc. You have—it's an animation that you're <laughs> playing, so there's no way around it. 
I think it's been done already, though. Bad Apple on the SNES. If, if it has, I haven't seen it. But I'd be surprised if it has. Let me look it up. No, it's been done. I don't know if it's on... I'm not seeing it. Like, I, I'm certainly seeing people like posting videos of them doing it on the SNES. I'm just not seeing one on that for it. I wonder if it's yeah. stock SNES. Hmm. I would... I bet it might be, but there's that... What was it called? Some, some video decoder chip. Yeah, there's a video at least on Super Smash Bros. Combat of uh, Bad Apple mm. on the SNES, so it probably exists, it's just not on Puet. Yeah, and the frame rate. Mom, Mom says it was 8 megs. So already that doesn't count for me. Yeah, I did one for um, Mac OS Terminal. Uh, I just like party coded at Nova, but I've not really it anywhere. So I, can't, I can't be bothered to like redo the music. Um, and I don't really feel comfortable just like releasing an AUG of the existing music, so... Convert it! A converter! <laughs> yeah, just, just bit crush it so it gets fast content ID. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna skip the rest of this because we already know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna play the winner of the modern... Uh, platforms uh, the pc oh, hey, like. nice. which this was... is the one you mentioned earlier wasn't it yx um it might have been they have been doing a lot like for every single party they knew and they do a new 4k so this is by yeah, jet lag like provod and keen this one won uh ts constructions yeah, i'm not sure if it was this one that i was talking about it looks like it's doing some temporal reprojection stuff. I don't even think it's that. I think it's just like recycling like the previous frame at like. Half yeah, I think it is too. Um, and I know he said. That, so slow. Yeah, or I think. So slowly, I should say. Yeah, I think it also renders at like half resolution. Mm. Um, so it like it's whatever the screen width is divided by two, and then like stretched out sideways. Yeah, you can also see some artifacts that their pseudo random stuff for generating the reflection rays is not great. Yeah. But that's a bit hard to get right. No, yeah, absolutely. I, I've speculated about the viability of doing a path tracer in a, in a showdown. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I'll take a stab at it one day. <laughs> I think you should. It's just one of the, it's it's one of those annoying things where if you don't get the details right enough. Yeah, it looks really bad. That's kind of more of the challenge than anything else, I think. Yeah, exactly. Didn't so nice try to do a bad tracer on 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 Shader Showdown at Nova. Um, or am I, I don't confused? think he was path tracer, but he was certainly doing um, a lot of noise in his first, no, second, second effect that he did. Um, it was very, very noisy, but I don't think it was a path tracer. Okay, let's move on to Trsak. Entries first for the Amiga 64k by Focus Design called Struct On. This is a nice intro. I don't think I've seen this one. It's Amiga AGA, I believe. Oh, yeah, it says so right there. I'm still a sucker for this like late 90s IDM kind of style. I wouldn't yeah, call no, this no, IDM, but okay. <laughs> As an IDM fanboy, I feel insulted. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I would define this music style as. Maybe like acid disco or, or, or cheese disco. I don't know. Or Alcama on Amiga. Alcama on Amiga. <laughs> Whatever it is, it works. Absolutely, it does. It's 
points and lines connecting the points. I like that they do the mosaic effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. You can do that in hardware on this uh, SNES, can't you? Yeah, it's in hardware. I'm guessing it's not in hardware on this. Though. No, not as far as I know. I'm liking the sort of pseudo 3D scroll that they have there. Olive is saying that you have um, that bit crunching effect, but I think it's like about the SNES, but uh, you could not do it on the sprites. Oh. So I, I believe that's correct. Yeah, I, I remember a few games, some JRPGs, where that happened a lot. Like you would see the, <laughs> the sprite properly. Like Mario was a good example. The whole thing would yeah. do the, the bit crunching and Mario would stay the same. <laughs> Going in and out of the levels. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that effect got a lot of use. I mean, I guess you could do it vertically just by changing the like, scroll positions on the H blanks. Um, I mean, that would work vertically. Yeah. But you wouldn't um, be able to do it horizontally. No. Oh, God. What this is this? This seems awesome. <laughs> this I remember. This feels very Dutch. So someone in the chat is like, just thinking back to a comment YX made a while back, uh, it would be awesome to see the three of us collab on a shader in real time. Someone should mod Bonzomatic for that. Oh, God. And I think, I think that there's another great idea hidden in that too, which is Twitch codes the shader. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, that's just going to end up with somebody figuring out the distance functions for phallic objects and coding those in. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I mean, there was this thing where you could tweet the the, um, the full... I think it was for processing, though. Like, you, you had to use the size of a Twitter, which was 140 characters. Well, now it's expanded, so I guess you can reuse it for something bigger. And you had to put the whole code there of the of the thing, and I, but I think it was for processing uh, at the time. But it can be easily adapted to do shader stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah, mentor of TBC was doing a bunch of those actually. Hmm. Yeah. Like, that, um, Twitter. Yeah, I think Molly just pointed that out in the chat. Yeah, D Twitter or D Witter. I think it was called D Twitter though. Hmm. It was by one of the guys from Ninja Dab, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that was released at Solskogan one of these years, actually. 2015, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, it was released at Solskogan, I remember that. Something like that. So, and what, talking of Ninja Dev, here they are. Yeah, one of the things I want to point out before we get too far into this demo is just look how stable the image is here. Like, you don't see when things are fading in and out. You don't see kind of the typical artifacts of this kind of style. At least I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really like this one. Um, the only thing that bothered me is that when they played it live, they cut back to the like the body meister slide before it finished <laughs> yeah it was a slight mistake yeah but you know it happens yeah people are saying it reminds of the far brush one you're talking about uh massaging but there was another one made by nero before that abused this even more and if you don't know it you should go check it out it's a really good demo 
There's also a scene in Life Force that's very similar. Yeah. Also, on the Bonzomatic thing, there was a silly idea I had a while back, um, which was the idea of exp like when you're in a showdown, you've got two people against each other. You expose the other person's shader as like a texture. That would be cool, like a feedback thing. Yeah, like a yeah, kind of awesome. ping pong feedback thing. <laughs> then I just spend the whole thing, make the whole time making post effects. <laughs> just make chromatic aberration, and then <laughs> yeah, just take the other person's shader, slap hundred sample chromatic aberration on it, be done. <laughs> uh, it was a uh, polynomial who actually had that idea at revision to just. Why don't you do chromatic aberration in the shader compo? <laughs> I could do that. Yeah, you do have to kind of brute force the effect. But... As indeed I did at Nova as well. Yeah, it works. Yeah, Bob, that was the name of the demo. The Agwig Schmerz. With my extensive German. Uh, yeah, I'm saying. not even going to try to pronounce that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, this definitely just has, um, like, in terms of audio, the first just ninja death written all over it. Yeah, it does. Sigma Seb. Yeah. So I think it was either this one or the second place intro was my personal favorite from the party. I just really like this style. It's it just reminds me of like the demos we watched at the beginning of the stream of the stream, like stuff I just fell in love with ten years ago and just ten yeah. years ago. This feels very sort of classic demo scene. Yeah, and I just I think it's done really well. It's it's like peak turbo for me. Oh, hey, look! It's even got a little bit of uh, desaturated chromatic aberration going on. <laughs> Who does that? Yeah, I've never seen a demo do that before. <laughs> Yeah, chromatic aberration is the new hypno glow. By the way, that did get a lot of applause at the party when, when they did that. This part looks a bit ugly, though. And I'm really happy about it. What? Why? Why is there a whisk suddenly? <laughs> because it's stirring stuff up, obviously. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this scene looks really good. This is really nice, yeah. I think this was done with Tool. Yeah. The Framefield Tool. Framefield slash still slash LKCC Tool. Yes. I believe it was. This screen in particular, I really like. In terms of that older demo style thing. Yeah, I was going to say that that's very classic 90s. Replay and whatnot. Yeah. This scene bothers me. The aspect ratio just really grinds my kids. <laughs> Break dancer. I was really happy when I saw this scene because it played before the intro combo, where we did something similar. Hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, "Hey, look, it's Trash Panda." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they stole our intro and just put some chromatic aberration on top of it. It's okay. We put more. <laughs> uh. Oh, I really like this. <clears throat> this is the intro by Extra Pure Pure Terrestrial in Impossibility. 
I think it's uh, Tropical Trevor with uh, with another another name. Yeah. And the track is Sunset Rider. The, the demo is called Anatomic Kittens. Actually, an intro, I think, right? No, this is a full size demo, but it's made with the intro tools. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, I think it's the other way around. I think it's uh, extra peripheral impossibility by Anatomic Kittens. I think you're right about that. Yeah. That, then the video on YouTube is wrong. <laughs> Okay. And I think this, uh, one of the things that Trevor was really excited about here was the uh, God Ray stuff, the volumetrics. Yeah, that looks really nice. I, you, you can kind of see artifacting here and there, which kind of ruins it a little bit. Um, yeah. Not so much with the God Race, but just with the, the demo in general. Um, yeah. But no, the God Race themselves are really nice. I think this is a really nice demo. I think the colors generally aren't my favorite, maybe a bit saturated, but I think there's just so much good content here. And there's a lot of content. Yeah. Oh, it's a full size demo, isn't it? It's not uh, 64k. Yeah. I mean, even then, like in terms of. They sat down and wrote a lot of shaders. Yeah. It, was just, it feels like a big effort. I like that overlay a lot. Yeah, I think that overlay is. EMG was a bit of a cheat, but. Something I do from time to time is just like take various demos and stick them through render doc and just have a look and see oh, yeah. what, what does the frame look like. Um, I did kind render of render doc. Sorry, go on. Oh, sorry, uh, render doc works surprisingly well on a lot of demos. Like I somehow wouldn't have expected it to, but I don't really see any reason why it wouldn't. Yeah, I'm just happy I, it does. I've, I've never seen it work on a conspiracy demo. It always just comes up with some weird crash. Um, but I, I did like running Iota through it because it was very much just kind of draw two circles, draw the rest of the owl in a single draw call. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, the floor here kind of artifacts a lot and that really kind of fucked me. It kind of ruined this effect for me. You know, I don't recall it doing that in the compo. Really? But... I might have been slightly intoxicated. <laughs> Maybe it depends on the card. Maybe it has more glitches. Maybe. And yeah. uh, this capture. That's what I would suspect. But yeah. Again, sure. it's just a small thing, but it is noticeable. This one that we're watching now is called Brutal Brexit DC Daggers. And it's by Evil with three Vs of uh, <laughs> Desire, I believe. <laughs> What was that? I don't recognize this, but I'm liking it. There's some really fun geometry here. Yeah. That's what I particularly remember from this one. But one last note on render doc. I hate that I can't get it to work with the demo tool. It works with the output intro, so I was able to use it for some debugging, but that is not a fun debug cycle. Sure export and then rebuild the player and then test it render dock and stuff but did come in handy I went to Tronic is saying that it has an X mix filled with a little bit yeah Dolphins with lasers, that's for sure. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I mean, the, like the color scheme as well um, on that geometry, the white and yellow just feels very classic and it just works really, really nicely. I think so too. It reminds me of the stuff uh, Mad of Still was doing uh, four or five years ago, I think. Like on Fort Gaze? Yeah. Okay, this soundtrack. Just saying. This was a this is a really nice demo. Yeah. Eight K. They they hacked some GMDLS playback into um, Fortnite, and I think it's really nice. And there's a lot of really good ideas for how this these particles are used too. Like this this is a really clever demo. This is my other potential personal favorite from the party. So many potential perfect. <laughs> well, this one and the turbo one. I think in hindsight, maybe I like this one more. I'm not sure. Yeah, it does feel like um, Boca Barcelos are uh, kind of the new hotness. Can't complain. Yeah. are particles with hexagons totally different <laughs> yeah that's just a different texture that you stick on the core <laughs> <laughs> or i guess you it's just, just a different texture you stick on the quad man <laughs> <laughs> i actually don't know if it's i don't think they're using a texture i think they do it procedurally oh yeah no, it would make more sense i realized as i was saying it that no they probably did it procedurally yeah, it's I honestly game. have no idea, but so. that's what just what I would have done. Yeah, for I mean, I imagine that's what you did for um, IOTA. It's just you know, yeah, it is in the middle radius clip it done. Yeah, some stupid math, but has good edges. Yeah, yeah. The the, the Boca particles at the start of my demo from revision were completely like brute forced in the shader. Oh, yeah. There weren't very many of them because it was just literally a loop from one to like three hundred. Yeah, Coupe did something similar in the Shader Showdown this year, too. Yeah. I mean, it, it works, but it's not pretty, and it's not the optimal way of doing it, obviously. I think it, I think it looks good. You just don't really get enough to do a lot more interesting shapes. It's kind of the bigger problem, I think. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think you can make it look really nice. Yeah, Akuma was saying that this reminds of Replay. Yeah, the, especially the music. Yeah, absolutely. I really like that soundtrack. Now we have Trash Panda. So there's some Chrome Ab. <laughs> when is that not? <laughs> In this demo, there isn't not any ever. But it's often turned on very low. Yeah. Now this this grew out mostly of um, compute shader tests I did after revision, and some stuff was rushed. I spent a week working on a packer that we couldn't use because it wasn't as good as Crunchy in the end. Um, the next one will hopefully use it. You guys from Logicoma seem to be a little less active than you were the year before. Is it because you've been focusing on uh, the Packer stuff or just life taking? Ah, uh, for me, it's been life. But I think, I think Ian's been a little little busy too. Mm -hmm. Wobble's been out for a while too. I mean, I think just a lot of things came up. Last year, we, we did a lot. And I really felt it. <laughs> Hard to keep up with... Uh with the base yeah so it's been it's been a, a refreshing break and i mean this i think this demo has a lot of new tech in it uh, at least from my part that that i did over a couple months um and it felt good to spend that long on it even though of course there was a big crunch in the last couple weeks but i'm i'm happy with it yeah it came out looking really nice It looks like us, at least. 
Yeah. It's definitely got the kind of signature Logicona style to it. Soupy says Darth Seder has the best name, and I totally agree. <laughs> Nobi is not a member of Logicoma. Yet. <laughs> Yet. I'm thrilled with this soundtrack. Just saying. Was this uh, Nobi using your uh, your synth or collaboration Nobi with Hoffman? Nobi and Hoffman. Okay. It was collaboration with Hoffman. And I, you definitely hear both. And someone argued you couldn't really hear Nobi. And he took that as a compliment, which I respect. But I <laughs> really hear Nobi in this, and I'm really happy about it. Thing is, Nobi is so versatile. He just knows how to produce well the sounds and uh, the stuff. So he can adapt to, to the style that he wants to do. Exactly. And he has killer sound design. Yeah. So it, a lot of stuff that like he or or, or, the, or Hoffman and I would have never come up with. So really cool stuff. Yeah, and there were a lot of people talking about the uh, the side chain on that one, as being maybe a little bit too much. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I think I think that's I think that's fair. I think it's like, what this is repeating. So I'm gonna skip to the next uh, stuff. Which yeah, is I think stuff? it's a fair bit of criticism, but I don't agree. That's fair. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a audio producer in any capacity, so I think I didn't notice it at all. Yeah. Moving on to demos from Demo Splash, and this is Story by Goblin. Uh, I is... haven't seen this, so yeah. uh, this is the first time for me. Apparently, it's a love story. Spectrum. Deep scene poetry shit. I miss some proper scene poetry. It was so it was so big in the nineties. And then Backslide people. Backslide Seven comes to mind. Backslide Seven was awesome. I really love that demo. Yeah, me too. <laughs> to the bit where I'm just kind of quietly googling for everything I have to look up later to get all the references. <laughs> That's back with two Ks. Yeah, I'm gonna type on 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 the <laughs> chat. Backslide Seven. This one, if you don't know it, you should really check it out. It's really good. Yeah. Great demo. I don't know looks like it. Very inspirational. To me, at least. What, she was a vampire? What was that? Like, the most important scene, and it cuts immediately. Now I, do now I don't know what happened. Did she kill him? What 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 happened there? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, goblin maybe. <laughs> Chunky mode sinus stuff. And Soviet Russia, you're not riding her. She was riding you. That's true. That's what happens when the Russian people do demo. I guess this is the techno part of the demo. Psychedelic techno part. Yeah. With dots. Oh, dancing dots, yeah. I didn't understand the scene with the blood. Uh, I'm confused. I'm confused. You just don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand art, I apologize. 
But I, it's good to see Goblish trying to do full end demo because usually just does like one effect and participates in those 256 byte uh, compos with uh, spectrum Quite effects. Well, I might add. Hmm. So uh, yeah, he he's he's a good coder. Um, and the story didn't seem completely bad. I mean, it's good that he has a theme in the demo, but I don't think it quite worked in the end. Anyways, this is gone by, I think, Elmuj. It's 128 byte MS-DOS intro with Kovok sound. I mean, I mean, I only have one word for this, really, which is how. With, with a sampler, I have a, I have a similar apparently. word, which is wow. <laughs> I mean, it's Helmut, so it's kind of not surprising, but even still. So I don't know what Kovox sound means. I think Kovox is an external device which you connect to the serial port and make sound, so you have to code sound for it. At least I believe that's the use that they usually give Kovox on older machines. I don't know if it's the same use on PC. I might be completely wrong. If someone knows on the chat, please let me know. Or let us know. I mean, granted, I don't think this kind of fractal is that difficult to generate. I mean, it's 128 bytes. I'm not knocking, knocking the effort here. I think, but I think that really helps with being able to focus on the sound, for example. Yeah. Olive saying that it's a sound card which takes a stream over DMA. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Then it's actual synth. He's saying that it's literally just a DAC. Oh, okay. So the demo itself is doing essentially a soft synth then? Sounds like it. Sounds like a fixed point soft synth. Yeah. I guess he just wanted a different way to do sound on the DOS because he already explored yeah, MIDI. MIDI and Byte Size Go. So let's do something completely different. Let's hook something up. Reminds anyway, me so. of a lot of load errors, Amiga since. <laughs> I'm going to anyway. change to the next demo, which is also for a strange um, platform, Fujitsu Micro. Oh boy. Cover sound. Apparently it's programmed by FM Towns. Or for the FM Towns. I guess it's Fujitsu Micro Towns. I guess it's a special kind of the Fujitsu Micro. I don't know. But let's look it up. Fujitsu Micro Towns. <laughs> Towns system is a Japanese PC ver var variant. Built by Fujitsu from February 1989. The oh, summer cool. of... I need to open the Wikipedia. Okay, so it's a Japanese version of the. Uh, yeah, and we're playing Fujitsu Micro. And it has ducks and balls bouncing with oh, physics! <laughs> what more could you possibly ask for? More colors? <laughs> <laughs> they already have all the colors possible. <laughs> okay, how about this? Probably Fujitsu Micro only has like 16 colors. Let me check. This music is insane. <laughs> oh, it has different bitmap modes. You can actually select uh, 16 out of 4,096 4, colors. And these are the ones they chose? <laughs> <laughs> well, where is your Fujitsu Micro demo, I ask you? <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I, I like to see stuff doing... Uh, I like to see people doing stuff with uh, platforms that other people aren't doing. I mean, it yeah, shows what's cool. possible on the machine. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it could have gotten a musician instead of just playing the... <laughs> music from public domain. Definitely has the I'm, charm. Hey, you, you can do public domain music well. Um, in a demo. Yeah. That's also true. That, that was also a big burn. <laughs> Anyways, let's go for another old school platform. This is the Apple II 64K cycle counting mega demo. Okay. For the Apple II. 
a lot yeah, less was... colors available. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, there was guessing... a prism beings demo a while back, the name of which completely escapes me, but it was using um, some public domain music, and it was really, really nicely done. Oh, the architecture one. Uh, yeah, the one that was like kind of essentially just white and. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, from Nobby. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if, I think it was the 88 miles per hour did a, probably a similar video trick to get colors like this one's doing. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just talking out of my ass. I have no clue. But I think this is just monochrome display hardware. Uh, so he's asking if this is 80, 88 MPH inspired. Um, they didn't rip sound on AT88, I believe. I think it was original sound. Mm. So, no. <laughs> and AT88 was about pushing the limits of CGA, and uh, that wasn't really CGA. It was. I mean, this is. I, I don't know if it's CGA, but it appears to only have four colors. Oh, well, this is Apple II colors, so it's it's. I think mm. it's less colors than CGA has. I could be wrong, though. I thought though. the Apple II was one bit. And I'm pretty sure this is done using hardware tricks. Some it timing stuff be. in the videos. Uh, I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about, so... We need an either. Apple II expert. Apple II expert to room one, please. I just... I, I, have, I find it hard to imagine... Uh, Where's John Carmack when you need him? I'm seeing and also... Like this much static images, if it were anything else, then very difficult to display this. Yeah. Trying to read up on Wikipedia. Not, that it's not nice as it is, but I just, that's what I think is going on here. Well, that's why they call it a color mega demo, I guess. Yeah. That's the other clue. Cycle counting mega demo. Hmm. That just it's, goes to, me, to show like... that. Go on, go on. Well, to me, it, it looks like there's. You have some kind of character display that they've added color to, probably with the cycle counting stuff. That's what I would imagine. Like they're modulating the output signal somehow with a lot of timing critical stuff. And that gets you color. And then the rest is kind of variations of changing the character maps. Because everything seems to be that kind of chunky style. But still just guessing. Uh, Apple II could only res display four colors. Okay, okay this is But Wozniak that. later was able to generate 12 in low res mode. So this might be the low res mode. Okay. I mean, judging by how chunky it was, that would make sense, yeah. All right. Now we have party at Spencer's. I mean, I'm lost by Fulcrum. This is totally like the old Orion logo. <laughs> yeah, it's very uh, vapor wave. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough Chrome to be vapor wave. What's the platform here? It's this PC, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, PC and got second place. Nice. Yeah, the encoder's having a field day, but it looks lovely. Yeah, they just don't like lines, apparently. It's a racism thing. <laughs> I don't know, I'm guessing there was some noise on top of it that the encoder's just mm. threw right about. Good. Watch it real time. Yeah. <laughs> Go to a shader showdown and just ignore over everything so that they have to yeah, like, yeah. code out by hand to see what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> like an old magazine? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Fractals. Well, it is Fulcrum, so they usually have fractals. 
true. <laughs> With reflection, nice touch. <laughs> Interesting scene transition. <laughs> I just find it so funny that this entire time people are talking about balls touching in the chat and then we get to this scene. It's important. And now here they are really touching for sure. Yeah. They need to touch, otherwise there's no transmission of energy. True. But at an uh, atomic level, nothing ever actually touches. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> I'm going to start using that one. When I'm quite drunk and people start talking about balls touching on demo effects, I'm going to start mentioning that on an atomic level, <laughs> it's not quite accurate. You're going to be so popular. Yeah, yeah. I know, Ooh. right? <laughs> Like, oh my god, everyone is drunk and he's so wise. <laughs> that's exactly how that's going to go. <laughs> Anyways, this was the winner demo. Uh, Hollow Reality by Bedrock Bros. Same guys that did the Intrinsic Gravel tea. And I think one other one. Oh, I was thinking that's an aquarium, but no, that's actually a uh, hologramic thingy thing yeah they censored the model <laughs> i forget the name of it but it's some newfangled holographic display thing say this music sounds familiar i wonder what it is <laughs> but it's like the a remix with a more trance upbeat thing yeah That looks yeah. really cool, like... Holography. Oh, were made of empty space. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, this is cool, but it feels like you have to see it on the actual hardware. Yeah. I do agree with the camera work here, though. Yeah, to show, yeah. like, that it's really... has yeah. 3D depth. It's the right way to present this. Yeah. With our inferior two-dimensional technology. It's a hardware chromatic aberration. <laughs> get down. Yeah, I mean, you could get um, a hardware chromatic aberration on like a VR demo just by not doing the lens correction. <laughs> yeah, totally. Holographic plasma effect. I even get greetings, Ferris. Why? Because they liked your other demo so much that they made the version of it. <laughs> was wasn't mine though. I think. Well, they did have a part from it, but. Oh, it was from Still. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah, Still demo with Hoffman doing the soundtrack. And a really nice still demo of that. With shadows. I mean, it's impressive. I miss that the, the face of the guy was not in 3D. There was a version that they made it on 3D, and I think it would have really popped if they had used that version. I think they had a hard time finding someone to model that. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just rip it from the other demo that had it. <laughs> yeah, right. Just rip it from the other demo and get arrested for scene crimes. <laughs> You're gonna serve you a, a copyright cease and desist. <laughs> 
illegal use of demo on unknown platform. <laughs> on unregistered platform. Uh, this looks pretty cool. I mean, if it looks good on the video, imagine what it will look like if you would really dare. Yeah, exactly. I wonder what you have to output to a display like this. Um, I think it's just... Um, like, it's a low-resolution frame buffer, but it's kind of projecting a multiple versions of it from different angles. Sure. Um, so you essentially just have to render the same frame from, like, I don't know, 50 different camera angles. That yeah, are, that like, would have been... Evenly that's spaced. Like. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Okay, that was the winner of Demo Splash, and we just reached the end of our show. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you, our guests, uh, Ferris and YX, for joining us. Uh, hope you guys had a good time. Thank also to the, the, the guys on the chat, of course. Uh, the guys that support this show on Patreon. Uh, Garfield, Jeff, uh, Paul Jean Popkit, Fulcrum, Paul Falcão. Get it, Wizendorf, Trickster, and Evil. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we will be back next month with a special on Silly Venture and X with the arrogant bastards, Sir Garbage Truck, and Frankie. So nice. that's it from us for today. Uh, Ferris, do you want to plug? The, you were saying that you were getting back to streaming. Do you want to plug your stuff? Yeah, why not? Really? I'm streaming again. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Ferris stream stuff. Uh, I'll be streaming tomorrow, actually, at the same time that this started. So that'll be cool. Every week, All right. Thursday. All right. Yeah. And uh, YX, do you want to plug your stuff as well while we're at it? Yeah, I might as well. Um, yeah, I also stream. Uh, I've been doing essentially Bonzomatic potato streaming for the last couple of months. Um, and that will be happening tonight in about 50 minutes' time. I'm going to go for a bathroom break and find something to eat. Um, yeah. And that will be over at twitch.tv slash lunar sorcery. No. Okay. So guys, go check out Luna Sorcery. And I should be seeing some Bonsomatic stuff. Why do you do uh, with with Bonsomatic and not Shader Toy directly? Um because it takes up more of the screen with the effect, pretty much. <laughs> okay, fair That's enough. The only reason. <laughs> I I told you all the uniforms from Shader Toy because I'm more used to them and I just like hash to find them at the top of the file. But it's mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. It, you get more of the screen out of it. So. Okay, fair enough. Okay, thank you everybody for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. Take care. Yeah, thanks. See ya. <laughs>